Remember we uh, talked about the Bjorn Savart law and that it's used for uh, finding the magnetic field of a current carrying wire. And then we said that uh, the first example we did is a straight line of uh, length L. So that this is the point zero, 0, and this is the point L0. And then we found the magnetic field that it creates at different uh, regions. And we noticed that it was a doable integral no matter where, which point we pick, you could still do the integral. And then we noticed that the magnetic field at the ends was less than the magnetic field in the middle, right? So here was the maximum. The, the highest magnetic field was along the middle axis, which made sense, right? Um, and then we noticed that the magnetic field here along the axis was zero. So this is different than the electric field case. Now, one of the other things I want to show you is if I take the magnetic field of the middle axis and I find its limit as B goes to 0, OK? So limit of uh, B middle axis as B goes to 0, and that's going to give me When b goes to 0, then it becomes insignificant compared to this, right? So it becomes square root of L squared over 4, which is L over 2. And then the L and the L cancel. So uh, L over 2, L and L cancel. So you basically have 2 on the, in the numerator that you end up with. And then that 2 cancels with this 4. So you get mu 0 i over 2 pi b. So when I go closer to the wire, when I go closer to the wire, the behavior of the magnetic field is mu zero i over two pi b. Uh, it, de it's, uh, it decreases linearly. I mean, as I go closer to it, it increases as one over b. Now, why is that significant? It's not that significant now, but in a few minutes when I go over Ampere's law, you'll see why that is very interesting. So keep that result in mind, mu zero i over two pi b. And then the other limit I can do is the limit as b goes to infinity to find the magnetic field behavior as I go away from the wire, okay? And then that time, this is uh, big compared to that. So you're only left with B, right? So you're left with mu 0 i L over 4 pi what? And then uh, B and times a B is a B squared. So as I go away from the wire, the, the magnetic field decreases as a B squared which kind of resembles how the electric field of a point charge, right? 1 over uh, r squared. So if I were to graph the magnetic field of a wire, let's say starting at the surface of the wire, um, uh, don't worry about now going inside of the wire yet, but starting from the surface of the wire, here's r. So the surface of the wire has a radius of r. The magnetic field is equal to some big number mu zero i over two pi r, then it's, it's a behavior is one over r when you're close to it. In the middle, in this region, its behavior is some general function given by this, right? And then as you go very far, its behavior is a one over r squared behavior. which means it decreases more rapidly. The 1 over r behavior doesn't decrease as rapidly. Then it goes in like that, and then it decreases much more rapidly like that. OK, so let's keep that in mind as we do other things.